Hello Snacks, welcome back, my name's Jack. In an extremely belated celebration of Halloween, we're gonna check out some creepy experiences people have had online. Well, not like online, but like in real life. You get my point. Beginning with this young guy's experience with this woman on the train. This happened last week, and while she didn't seem malicious, the things she said was creepy. So I'm a 19-year-old male, and I was going home from university, and to get home, I have to use the train. As I got on, a lot of the seats were occupied, in my country, the seats are put in a way so that four people can talk and sit in front of each other, and they are kind of close. Perfect for talking, even with strangers. Sadly. The end. That's it. That's the creepy part. Ooh, you have to talk to strangers! I see that there is a free space in front of this girl, who is one or two years younger than me, but you can never know. Anyway, I go there, and I ask her if I can sit down. Of course, she replied and looked at me in a strange, intense way. Well, I pulled out my phone to distract myself from her. She also had a chocolate in her hand. That's gonna be important for later. She asked me, Where do you live? And I was like, oh, Why do you have to know? So she asked when I'm gonna get off the train. I told her the place, and she told me that she's getting off at the next one. Oh, cute. You're both just a suburb away from each other. That's comforting. She started singing, then said, Oh, sometimes I sing. <laughs> I'm a silly girl. <laughs> then did it again. Whenever she said something, she looked at me like she was waiting for a response. So I replied, it's okay to be silly because I just didn't want to talk to her. Then she told me that you're pretty. And when I asked, what? She asked if she's pretty. So in my language, the second one is an extension of the first. Sjepvagi turned to Sjepvagiok. I am probably butchering that, but shush. So it seemed like she corrected herself. Then she asked if she had chocolate on her face. She did. I also got the chocolate she was having offered to me, but I declined. I imagine this moment was the equivalent of someone asking, do you think I'm pretty? Do you think I'm petty? Like just subtle enough that you can't tell whether or not you actually heard them right the first time. Now she also told me about her piercing that came off and she put it on in the middle of the train. I told her that she should get it fixed where she got it. And she said, in German, me? Will you go there with me? But obviously, I told her no. Uh, while she tried to put on her piercing back in, her mouth piercing, she told me that she's in love with me. I told her that I have a girlfriend. I don't, but the university I attend has much prettier girls than her. <laughs> oh, Jesus, what? Where did that come from? This girl's creepy because she's weird, but also because she's ugly. God, oh, how horrifying. Anyway, I mentioned that the pacing is too fast for me, and she told me that she will beat my girlfriend. Her, I love you, started escalating into, I'll kidnap you, strip for me. She asked me if I'll go with her, and if she could go with me home. Then, when the train arrived at my destination, she asked me, are you going, love? I told her yes, and went on my way. Luckily, she didn't follow me home. She also asked me when we are going to meet again. Hopefully, never. Now look, despite the obviously creepy behavior this person's exhibiting, I'm glad I'm not the only one to point out just like how... <laughs> So if she wasn't ugly, you'd be totally fine with this creepy and inappropriate behavior? Okay. I know it's common to say the bar for men is really low, but dude, this woman literally has the intention of beating up people and kidnapping you, and you think, well, if she wasn't ugly, I'd, I'd be all for that. But in any case, it turns out this might just be a language barrier issue, not so much them thinking she's ugly as it is just her behavior is ugly. Because in case you didn't notice in some of the broken English, uh, here you go. I feel very confident to say these people aren't twins and they're not doing twin speak together. Some theorize this woman may have some autism, just not being able to read social cues or thinking relationships are closer than they are. And if she's on the train again, just avoid her and stay away from her. Try not to be rude and just don't engage with her. Because you know, when people are like this, ignoring them totally makes them go away. Because like, I have to agree with this comment in response. They're an autistic person themselves and even they don't think it's an excuse for blatant harassment like this. Arguably, it's also rarely ever the cause for this kind of behavior. But according to someone who likes to fornicate with skulls, I like her. Yeah, this is what it's really like when you meet a manic pixie dream girl. Movies have lied to us all. Anyway, less about awkward encounters and more about potential home invasions. The lady at my door. When I lived in the rural Midwest about 10 years ago, I lived in a house right off the highway. My house was right between one town and another, almost right on the county line. Our house had a big circle driveway. If you drove in the driveway, you would be going straight towards our barn. If you curved right, you could pull into our garage. If you went past the garage, you could circle around in front of the house and pull back out to where 
where you started. Now, our house had two large double doors in the front, which we rarely use. We always use the door that was inside the garage. One night, it was very late. My doorbell rang. My husband, my three-year-old daughter, and I were all asleep. It woke me up and I thought maybe I was dreaming. It rang again. My husband up. He thought I was hearing things until it rang again. It was very dark outside, but we have a dust to dawn light, so most of the driveway is pretty lit up. Unfortunately, you can't really see the front doors unless you open the door and look out. You can open just one at a time, or you can open them both by using two latch-like things that are in the top and the bottom of one of the doors. My husband gets up and I follow him. He decides he is going to open the door. I want to call the cops, but because we live on the county line, we know it's going to be a while before they can get there. He opens the door to a girl, maybe early 20s. She looks normal, except for the fact she's standing at my door in the middle of the night. I look past her and see her car is pulled into my driveway, just off of the road, not up to the house, not around the circle. She says she needs to use the phone. She says her car battery died or something. She's not sure, but she can't get it to start. I told my husband, no freaking way. This is how horror movies start and we offered to call the cops, which would be the county sheriff. But she asks over and over, but I am not letting her in. We tell her we will call and she kind of stomps off. We watch her walk back to the car, maybe 50 feet away. I'm bad judge of distance, sorry. Anyway, I can see her car. I can see her. I call the cops. They say they will be there as soon as they can, about 15 minutes. They don't sound very concerned, and at this point, I'm not really either. I mean, it's just a girl. Probably does have a dead battery. She opens the trunk. No lights come on. She rummages around in the trunk. Then the driver's side door opens. Out steps a guy. Then the back passenger door opens. Out steps one more guy. They all rummage around the trunk. No lights on. I can't hear anything. I can't hear them talking and I can't tell what they are doing. They all get back in the car. Now, at this point, maybe five minutes have gone by and I am silently praying that the sheriff puts his foot on the gas and gets here quick, but I know it's going to be another 10 minutes or so. They just sit there in the car, lights off, not moving. I can't see them when they are in the car, but I know they are in there. I know they didn't get out of the car and walk past the house because they would have had to walk right under the dust to dawn light. I would have seen them. I think I see the driver a lighter smoke. That part I'm not sure about. But then I see something. Someone walking towards the car from the right, coming from the direction of the barn. It's a man. I have no idea who this man is. We don't have a neighbor for at least a mile and he's coming from the back of my property which ends in a creek. He walks under the dusk to dawn light straight to the car. He doesn't look at the house. He just walks to the car and gets in the back. The car starts up and they slowly back out of my driveway and head north. The cops arrive about 10 minutes later and at this point I am freaking out. They search around but they can't find anything. Asking us if we got a license plate but they were parked too far away. They tell us to call if they come back. I mean sure buddy, thanks. My husband goes and gets his shotgun from the shop on our property. And we try to go back to sleep. They never came back. I don't know who those people were and I don't know what they wanted. Creepy people in a car without a dead battery. Let's never ever meet again. Yeah, props to your partner's methodology there of just opening the door. It's nice to see he thinks he's a cat with nine lives. Though in an interesting argument, maybe that actually was the best case scenario to make it known that you were there in the house. Because with that stranger suddenly appearing from around the side or back of the house and walking back into the car, it's possible they were casing the joint. And if nobody answered the door, they would probably assume nobody was home and now you have potential home invasion. And with the home defense weapon not in immediate vicinity, this is bad news. Of course, it would be bad news if one of her companions was waiting in the shadows to bull rush the door as soon as it opened in the middle of the night as well. So yeah, damned if you do and damned if you don't. Like, what is the best case scenario here aside from immediately calling the police and immediately thinking the stranger wants to inflict harm? Hope he even comes back to say that, like, in his defense, this has happened before, but it was a clearly very nice couple coming to their house in the winter. They got uh, stuck in a snow drift, etc. But yeah, definitely needs to uh, bring that shotgun into a little, little cot beside the bed for the near future. Now over to a creepy experience with traffickers in another country, where Opie's own family members seem to gaslight her about the experience. It's, it's a bit of a weird one. I'm a woman. I'm Chinese, but I grew up in Sydney, Australia. However, I was born in Beijing, but on the outskirts of it, in a large town called Yungang Residential District, where my mom's family is from. When I was five, I immigrated to Australia, but my family would still travel back to China every few years. This incident happened in the snow 
snowy winter of 1997 when I was 11 years old. My grandparents still lived in Yongang and introduced me to a brother and sister who lived in the same building as them. I can't remember their exact ages, but I think the older girl was around 14 and the younger was around 6. I still remember the exact outfit as I was wearing as I'd been wearing the same outfit all trip. At that time, flared jeans were in and coming from Australia, I wasn't prepared for the snow and coldness of the Chinese winter and so on my first or second day there, my cousin had taken me to a shopping mall where she'd helped me haggle down the price of a bright pink duffel coat with fluffy white trimming. I thought it was the most fashionable thing ever and wore it every day. I have photos of me from the trip wearing that exact outfit. Oh, I feel that's such a universal thing at that age. Between 9 and 12, you find a single outfit and you think, that is it. That is my fashion. For me, it was something along the lines of this. <laughs> I had a shirt like this with the insignia there, some random anime character with a giant sword posing, but it was in more of a flame design like this. And yeah, the satin material. Mm hmm. That, <laughs> I thought that was fashionable. <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway, back to the story. We walked around town and I ended up going to a very large park with a lake inside it. It was a little bit of distance from the center of town. We were playing by the shore, throwing rocks, joking around, and having a good time. At some point, I looked up and realized it was getting dusky. Although it probably wasn't very late, but considering it was winter, the sun set early. The park, which had never been very busy to start with, was nearly deserted. There were still some other people, but they were a fair distance away from us. All except for two men who suddenly approached us. They were middle to late middle-aged, the uncle type. One of them approached me and said he was a friend of my father's and that he'd asked him to pick us up. I remember being confused because my dad didn't live in this town and was in another district about two hours away in Beijing where his family were from. Pretty quickly I realized something was off and so did the brother and sister I was with. We all started making excuses and backing off. I still remember very clearly that as we started backing away, the man who approached us looked back over his shoulder at his companion and asking him what he should do. His companion was standing a little distance away beside a white van with the door already slid open. Completely believed that he was considering snatching one of us and making a run for it. However, perhaps because there were three of us and perhaps because there were still people around in the peripheries, they didn't do anything. As I walked away rapidly, I looked back over my shoulder and remember seeing the two men just standing there watching us go. That 15 to 20 minute walk back was one of the scariest walks in my life as I imagined someone grabbing me from behind every second. The sun set just as we got into my building and burst in through the door. So happy to be home safe. I did tell my mom and grandmother about it, but at the time, child kidnappings in China, while already definitely happening, were much less of a massive and widespread news story as it is now. I think my mom especially felt that me being almost kidnapped was somehow a commentary on her parenting skills and was very dismissive and even now dislikes it when I bring it up. Well, but now the organized child and or bride kidnappings are such a huge story in China, it often makes me shiver at night to think how how different my fate could have been. There have been so many stories about young women and girls kidnapped and forced into becoming brides of villages in remote countrysides, sometimes tied to beds and having their legs broken to prevent them running away. They're forced to bear children, one after another. No one in the village will help them because almost all the men in the village have purchased brides from traffickers in this way. There's also children, usually boys, kidnapped into families who have been unable to have kids or adopt legally. They fare a bit better, but can also be abused and neglected. Now that I have my own kids and safe and warm in my bed in Sydney, I sometimes think about how wildly and irrevocably my life might have derailed that snowy evening in New Yang and shiver. Hi. <laughs> you know, I do kind of feel sorry for the mother here because I can only imagine how guilty she must feel. Like, she is a human being. She's capable of thought. It's probably pretty obvious she is aware of how severe this issue has become. Now, here's a little interesting discussion to go on about it. Someone does wonder, how is it 
such a big issue in China considering all the surveillance China's notorious for. Surely it's high risk. Surely it's expensive. How do villagers afford to purchase essentially slaves? Well, the OP got curious and looked it all up themselves. Apparently, child trafficking is on a downturn right now, which is lovely to hear. Not to mention with it all becoming more public that there are people who have been kidnapped, growing up, learning their childhood's all been a lie, and reuniting with their actual biological parents. Imagining that the villagers might be less likely to purchase children if they feel the child might abandon them after growing up. But apparently, it is not expensive to purchase a child from traffickers. Ironically, the biological parents would probably pay a thousand times that amount to have their child back if they could. It's actually not high risk for the villager. And they're not always villagers. I I'm just writing it like third for ease. Because they, get this, do not risk going to jail if the child is found to be trafficked. Now, the trafficker does, but often cannot be found. But the villager who purchased the child from the trafficker doesn't. This has been criticized and argued to be changed, but Apparently, the villagers could just lie and say they thought they were adopting the child legitimately, or maybe that the parents had sold their child voluntarily, and it's hard to prove they had knowledge otherwise. Wow. Getting away with trafficking children because I'm, I'm just, I'm stupid. Sorry. What a wonderful world we live in. And now to check out a wonderful magical friendship from two to three years ago. Just a trigger warning for grooming and stalking. In case it's not obvious, the magic is totally sarcasm. Two or three years ago, I met this girl through mutual friends. She seemed like amazing. She was so kind and eager to be friends with me. She'd give me presents and compliments so much too much, almost. Well, now, in this friendship I was developing with her, she'd talk about kidnapping me and having her to herself. Now, obviously, you tell a traumatized, naive 16-year-old like me at the time, and she'll think it's a joke, which is exactly what I did. After a while, she started to get oddly intimate with me. I was in a very committed relationship at that time too, asking if she could feel me up when we met because she didn't know what boobs felt like, or saying how her truck bed was perfect for getting it on under the stars in a field. So mind you, she's a year and 11 months older than me. I eventually moved to be with my friend group, unaware that she also lived here, but went to school with my friends. We were all friends with her, and they all have their sides of what happened that I won't recount, as it's their story to tell. Once I moved here, she'd try and come see me every day. Even after she turned 18 and I was oh, 16, almost 17, even bought me three pairs of booty shorts for Christmas with the note, Can't wait to see you in these. I picked the perfect colors. Winky face. I had been uncomfortable with her advances from the start and had been even telling her on multiple occasions that it was uncomfortable, but it didn't stop her advances. She was even trying to manipulatively convince me to leave my partner at the time. Once I started to pull away emotionally from her, she chewed me out threatening to kill herself or shoot up her school if I didn't want to be friends with her. Once New Year's rolled around and I couldn't handle the constant point harassment I was getting from her, I finally told my friends what was happening with her. They told me I was actively being groomed. The gifts, the compliments, the unwavering obsession with me. Oh, it made me sick. So me and my roommate finally decided to cut ties with her, blocking her on everything and having one of my parents tell her she was not welcome near me or the house again. So she was peed off. She started to drive by my house or near my street almost every day after she got out of school. Even at one point deciding to do a burnout very loudly at my friend's house because she knew I was at their house. She would ask my friends about me and if I'd done ignoring her, once she found out I got told I was groomed by her, everything switched. She hated me, said I ruined her life, led her on, forced her to smoke weed. She even started saying I sent her nudes and started to intimately flirt with her first. All of those not true in any way. She was telling these and so many other things about me to complete strangers at her school too. She was so mad at me, even on my 17th birthday, tweeting that she wished I'd just die already. All her anger, or anything she had said about me, would come back to me, obviously, as she was actively talking to or engaging with my friends. It had been months since I heard about her or anything she had said about me. I was finally content, but that paranoia I had was still strongly there and terrified. So I was going to a concert for one of my favorite bands ever, and I was even happier about it because they were playing in a city near me. I had tweeted about getting tickets and just how excited I was about it. Oh no, mistakes were made. Me and my roommate go to the concert and we're having an amazing time during the openness, 
I go out and get a cup of water, and out of the corner of my eye, I see her. She hated this band. She even bashed me for liking them so much. Not physically, just verbally. Knowing that, I brushed my worry off and went back into the concert venue. Once the openers left and the band started playing, me and my roommate were having such a good time. Then, during the third or fourth song, I turn around and see her so close it was uncomfortable. My body threw me into a panic attack on instinct, and me and my best friend had to leave the concert immediately. It was horrifying, and I'm still petrified to go to concerts in my state, honestly. I haven't heard anything about her or her whereabouts since then, besides hearing she got admitted to a mental hospital for saying some screwed up stuff to a friend of hers. Anyway, sorry for such a long story. Thank you to anyone who read, and to that girl, I truly hope we never meet again. You know, it is a sad but a refreshing breath of air to see that there are even women out there who are fooled by media and Disney movies into thinking that grand gestures and love bombing would actually persuade someone to like you if they originally didn't. With people offering concern and support, the OP has advised us all that they have changed their social medias and gone private, etc. Apparently to this day, a few years later, she still lives in the same town and OP does see the car occasionally, but that is the closest contact they ever have. And it seems this experience of friends assuming they want something more of you is weirdly common? This other person, I met her while drunk and was a bit hyper, but I was just being friendly and nice and wanted to be her friend. But the next night, they were by my place messaging to see them. I was mortified. They did this for four or five days straight before I accidentally made them hate me. All I did was tell them to respect the hospital staff and she blocked me. <laughs> Hey, do you think you could be a bit nicer? No! Anyway, friends, we might end the creepy stories there. Thank you, as always, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.